Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. Again, I know where I am and honor that which is here. The name of the place is the temple of wisdom. And so what we wish to do in this small amount of time is to bring you the kinds of wisdom that you've been asking for. And every single old soul in this new energy is starting to ask about. And the subject title, and humans like to title everything, would be body communication. And even before we begin, I will tell you that this is specifically about body communication of you to your cellular structure and not the other way around. That's for another channel. There's two kinds of communication. It's not one way. But we are going to speak of you and your body right now. Before we even begin, it's necessary dear human being, to review the blocks that get in the way of you understanding what is to come. You only have one reality. The reality that you share as a human being, and you share it even with my partner, is that you live in a linear world. You experience things in certain ways, and you're used to the way that humanism works. Human psychology, all of the things that you do, the motions, your actions, the reasons behind things, accomplishments, punishments, all of those things go into your perception of the way things work. It's not an indictment of your intelligence. When I say that then you naturally project this to everything else around you. And whether it's God or whether it's simply perception of reality in a multidimensional state, you bring forth only what you know. And that's a bias. There are certain ways in humanism that you would accomplish things through hard work and repetition and you then apply them to everything. There are certain ways that you work in humanism. Your relationships to other humans, the, the give and take that you have. And you apply it, therefore, to everything else. We have told you before that some of your organized religions have taken this to the to the absolute max and they have a a dysfunctional God one that can be angry and judgmental and all the other things that humans have and before we begin the discussion we say to you that you gotta drop that in the discussion we may remind you of some some traditional ways and then balance it with the truth you know it's beautiful the premise of this channeling is that you are able to speak to your cellular structure as we have been saying for years and it isn't hard that you've got to get around the human biases and it isn't hard Let's start the discussion, and we have to, with what I will call the preamble, or that which is necessary in order to accomplish what we're going to talk about today. We have to define, as best we can, consciousness, human consciousness. But this would not be the definition that you would read in your academia. 
These are the things that we see. Human consciousness is divided into several parts. We're going to talk about just two. The first one, it is that soup of reaction or behavior which is driven by two parts of the human body. And the first one is the synaptic brain, that is to say, the storehouse of experience. And the second is the multidimensional part that you believe is responsible for creativity, intuition, and God. It is a mixture of those two through free choice of the human being. It's the balance of those two which create a human being that indeed appears to others to be in control of their own life and satisfied with themselves. When this is out of balance, either way, you get dysfunction. When the human being has a consciousness that is only in the synaptic brain, there is no credibility of God in them. There is no ability for them to have truly creative thought. And they are so pleased to go only with what they know. And it serves them well. It is dysfunctional to us because there's the God part that is always there. It is always available and would give them so much of an increased awareness and light. But in free choice, that is what they do. There's the other one, and you have seen it, dysfunctional New Agers. <laughs> I will call them floaters. They are so wrapped up in that which is esoteric that they have no clue about life. And the synaptic brain doesn't have a chance. Logic and common sense are thrown out and the only thing that remains is what we will call make-believe and woo-woo. <laughs> you have seen them. You know what? That's acceptable for them. But that is human consciousness. A balance between that which is synapse and survival and that which is the part of God that you carry around now where are you and that is how we must begin this channel if you are listening today to this whether you are a human in the chair or you are later a human in the chair hearing this through transcription reading it the chances are you are aware of the divine part of you now the divine part of you is the elusive part it's the mysterious part but it's the part that's real as real as the synaptic brain and here's what I'm going to say this is linked linked so strongly to your ability to talk to your body if you are an intellectual and you are only trusting that which is synaptical in your brain you should stop now and go no further because you will not have any success with what I'm about to tell you isn't it interesting that these are linked so strongly you have to be aware of the divine inside because that is the pathway that is going to talk right to that which we have called innate we have given you information years ago that there would come a day on this planet when the health of individuals might very well be measured in a far different way than it is today that those with a higher consciousness would obviously be living longer and there would be no medical measurement that would give the reasons why we told you that consciousness may eventually drive the very attribute of human balance in a cellular way, at a chemical way. 
and that the other things that you now are centered on, which are, of course, diet, exercise, will take a back seat to consciousness. And if we told you that, what are you then going to bring as the conclusion? And that is that things are changing for the human being. The very attributes that keep you alive are going to start changing for the human being. Greater awareness, by the way, of the three-dimensional attributes of what your body needs is going to bring you greater health. But that alone is not going to help you talk to your cellular structure. So if you've come this far, and if you are on board, as they say, and you can say honestly, I believe that there's a divine part of me, then we can continue. And the rest of this information will be given with the premise that you have that. Those who are spiritually minded have come to that point many times. Those who are spiritually minded know about the cellular structure of their body because it has a spiritual complement and component, a benevolence, and they're ready to go. But what they do next is often interesting. Historically, the human bias kicks in. And even those who would call themselves enlightened and new age will start what I will call a linear process of repetition and nonsense. <laughs> Things that they have decided are needed to talk to their cellular structure. Why would you want to talk to your cellular structure? And it should be obvious. What is the paradigm that you grew up with? Historically, here it is. That you, as an enlightened creature, live in your head. That everything that happens to you is in your head. The greatest poetry ever written, the greatest music ever composed, the greatest paintings started in the head. And that the rest of your body is the vehicle that supports your head. And your head every once in a while will look down at your body and say, I sure hope this thing works. <clears throat> and that is traditional. And then it's enhanced by everything you see around you with those catching diseases or things that happen. And then the fear starts. The fear will create the hypochondriac who is afraid of everything, who believes they're going to catch everything. And by the way, they usually do. <laughs> That's the human body trying to agree with what it hears from the head, by the way. And that ought to give you a hint of what's coming. That's the traditional thought that you don't have any control. Now you come to this place where you know better and you're sitting and you're listening to this and you're ready to go. And in the past, the new age has just been filled with processes that are supposed to then have you be able to talk to your cells. Now, not talking back from your cells, but you to your cells. And they are filled with the following thing. Repetition, over and over, processes that the human being thinks would be attributes that the cells would like. You have to go to a certain place in a certain temperature, be in a certain energy, face a certain direction. You might have to do it several times. If you can do that, you'll get the body ready to listen. There'll be a small window of opportunity. You can give a message. That's the human bias. Dear ones, this is, it's time to demystify this. This is not accurate. It's not, this is not the way of it. 
It makes an assumption that the body is stupid. It doesn't know anything about anything. It is completely and totally and separated and divorced from your consciousness, from anything you're doing, and it's clueless. I want to tell you the truth. Ah. <laughs> Scientifically, this is going to be proven, and it's not going to be that far away. The cells of your body, especially what you would call innate, all have something in common, and we're going to give it a name for the first time ever. And here it is. It's going to be call, C A L. And here's what it stands for cells are listening. Cells are listening. Listening. This is how you were built. The divine complement in you is built into every cell of your body. The cells are a collection of what has been created by the DNA. Through the blueprint that is in there, every cell exists with one attribute, and it hangs out so clearly on itself. It's waiting for instructions. And the only instructions that it will hear are the ones given through the divine complement of human consciousness directly with pure intent to it. Did you hear that? Let's talk about that communication for a moment. It's like every single cell had a telephone that was ready to be answered if you knew the number. If you could dial the number, you could talk to all of them at once. They would all pick up the phone, and it'd be you. That's built in. And it doesn't respond to linearity. The communications with the cells of the body is a multi dimensional communication, but your human consciousness is also. <laughs> it's part of the DNA field, it's part of the Merkaba of your body. I'll tell you what an intuitive can do. You can look at your soul, literally, through the Merkaba field. And tell you whether or not you have activated any part of spiritual intent or whether you're just playing the role. What is pure intent? All right, let's talk about it in your way. Oh, I'm going to use it again. When you fall in love with someone, And you look at, you look at them in the eyes, two lovers looking at one another. There's nothing like it. Do you feel God in that? Do you remember? <laughs> do you feel God in that? You do. You're not even aware of it. Do you realize that this is why being in love is so amazing? Because God's there. Do you realize that this is not synaptic? You do understand that, do you not? In fact, the brain is really frustrated that you're in love. It's saying, you know, you ought to eat better. And you say, yeah, but I'm in love. Well, you ought to have better reasoning. Well, I don't because I'm in love. You know. Why are you putting your shoes in the freezer? Because I'm in love. I, I forgot. That's what it is. Now, when you look at somebody and you say, I love you. That's pure intent when you're in love. And you do. And you pour out your heart to the other and the other to you. And you're entangled as one. There's nothing like it. Now I want you to turn that around inward. There is a divine part of you that is in love with you, waiting for you to say, I love you. And it'll know if you mean it. 
if you're not in love with a person, but they want to hear it and you say, I love you, it's not the same. And you know it's not the same. It never will be. The magic isn't there. The connection isn't there. The entanglement is not there. It's just words. And so if you practice this about what we're saying today, in that form, it's not pure. And you don't have the right phone number for the cells of your body. But when you fall in love with yourself, honoring the body to such a degree that you realize it's part of God's creation of you. Without it, there would be no enlightenment. Without consciousness, nothing. It has to operate well, and it wants to. It wants to. And here is the opportunity. Years ago, you saw the gurus of India. They could control the, the things that are supposed to be automatic in the body, and they had control. They could slow their heartbeats down. They could make respiration extremely slow. They could take control of certain kinds of things within their body that nobody thought they could. They were talking to a part of their body that was listening and adjusting. They knew how to do it. And so do you. So knowing this, what is next? Well, we've just given you two premises. Number one, in touch with the divine part of you creates a pathway for you then to call your cells. C-A-L. Cells are listening. They are born with you listening to what you want. They are waiting for human consciousness to give them instructions. We'll do that in a minute. Now, how do you do it? Now that you know they're waiting, how is it possible? What would you say? There are still those who think they understand the process, that are awakened, they're light workers, there may even be new age, and they got it covered. They got a process for it. And here's what you do. You have to talk out loud to yourselves, and you got to tell them exactly what you want. And here's how many times you got to do it, and you should do it every day. Does that sound right to you? <laughs> to some it does. And if it does, I want you to recognize what you're doing. You are applying a linear human attribute to a multi-dimensional beautiful system that is beyond anything that you can imagine that is what you are calling your innate and it doesn't respond to repetition let's talk about innate some more you're ready to talk to a system that hasn't heard from you before not really not like this there is a new energy light worker on this planet old soul listen to me your tool set is being enhanced that's why you're listening to this you can do this I wouldn't be giving you something you cannot do you get in touch with yourselves I want to tell you that they're going to react I'll give you that information in just a moment I want you to look at this as in linearity you let's look at your best friend every one of you you would have a best friend perhaps it's your partner in life perhaps it's not somebody you can just sit with and talk to and there are there are no parameters that there's there are no rules you can say anything you want to and you can pour your heart out to them and they will listen and they can do the same with you and that's a best friend I want to ask you something. Let us say you have this best friend and you're going to be with them for three days. And you do this. Day one. You get up the next morning, they sit at the table, you're, you're, you're having a meal or something, and you give them all the same information again. <laughs> How do you think that's going to work? 
Well, it doesn't work with your cells either. Do you understand what I'm saying? Your cells are you. What would you say to you? Your cells are listening. C A L. You're ready for this. They're ready for this. They've been listening since you were born, waiting for the time when you would awaken to this possibility that you could actually speak to them. So let's do it. What would be something you would say? And how would you approach this? First of all, I want to tell you, they understand your language. <laughs> They're part of you. You will talk to them any way you want to. Out loud, through thought, through writing, it doesn't matter. Because you have their number. And the key is love. You have got to love your cellular structure enough that you can say, I love you. And it knows you, it knows you do. It, this is the, it can't be simpler. And yet it can't be harder. And you sit for a moment. What would you say? What will happen? When the body starts to listen to you, there are some processes that it goes through. Let me tell you what they are, and then I will give you an example of a communication, and then we'll be done. I want you to know some things. When you start talking to your cellular structure and you got the number right, the first thing that's going to happen is massive amounts of chills. You're going to know you got through, dear one. You're going to know you got through. And these are the cells of your body celebrating celebrating the innate the smart body whatever you want to call it is part of you they're having a party did you hear that we've we've got communication it sure took long enough let's have a party and although it's metaphoric, and although it is silly sounding, I'm going to tell you that that is what happens. The body has joy. Did you know that? The innate, when you're talking to it, feels great. Those of you involved with health, do you know what it feels like to be healthy? Your entire body is rejoicing with every step, with every breath. That's the innate celebrating you start talking to it all these years it's been listening hoping you would because it, it without direction it just does what it wants you know that don't you I talked about the law of averages my partner talked the bell shaped curve without instructions your body is simply going to follow that which is average do its own thing with instructions, you control it. Couldn't be simpler. First thing it does is celebrate. The next thing it does is start to work. And I want to talk about that starting to work. Depending upon the things that you are communicating to your cellular structure, whether it is for health or for healing, or for you thing, no matter what it is, you've got to give it some time. There is a practicality here that you have to understand because these things are only going to be accomplished through cell division and what you call rejuvenation. Your body is built to rejuvenate itself. Most of the organs in the body, including the skin, rejuvenate themselves. Over a period of time you get new ones. This is how you stay alive. When you start talking to your cellular structure 
those instructions are going to the data in DNA and they're going to be picked up in the next rejuvenation cycle and so you're not going to get results tomorrow this is common sense it becomes spiritual common sense to ally for the first time the idea that there is a time it takes in your linearity with your cellular structure even to accomplish healing <laughs> that not all things will be allied to spontaneous remission which is another story doesn't that make sense and so you will start to feel it over time and the things that you are working on and asking for will start to show themselves over time and it's the third thing that I want to tell you about that you're not ready for when you start talking to your cells the innate knows that your consciousness is benevolent it knows you want to stay and there are automatic systems that will go into place improving other parts of your body that you never ask to have improved you're going to start a process of extended life and healing will start to occur and balance in areas that your consciousness has no idea about but that your innate knows all about you have just awakened the bridge between human consciousness and cellular structure it's easy but you gotta fall in love imagine for a moment you sit alone and perhaps it's out loud and you're going to make first contact <laughs> doesn't matter how old you are how young you are and you're realizing you really are in love with the divine part of you perhaps you can even visualize the face of God whatever that means to you that you can see your eternalness in every cell of your body and you realize there's a cellular structure that is that is waiting to hear from you see a L and so you begin and you realize you've got their number you can feel it and even before you open your mouth the chills start to begin because they picked up the telephone and now they're really listening and the first thing you might say we know each other and I love you I'm sorry it took so long for me to figure it out I want you to go into the processes that you know about that I don't I want you to come together in a benevolence that would create health and a, la a long lasting human being I want you to talk to me in whatever ways you can that I can recognize I want to hold your hand and you hold mine for the rest of my life if there's inner, any inappropriateness and imbalance chemically in my body I want it to go away through time and appropriate action I realize I have habits that are killing me and I want them to change I realize that I have a very bad height to weight ratio <laughs> want me to explain that I'm being benevolent and kind dear cellular structure I want my metabolism to echo my magnificence help me to be the right size for the greatest health change what is needed pull on the akash if you need to in remembrance of who I used to be change my diet preferences if I need to 
Let the body crave what it needs and not what I want it to need. Bring it to a place of balanced divinity. And I promise, I will talk to you every day because I love you. And then don't hang up the phone. And then don't hang up the phone. Now if you want to analyze this channel, you'll realize that your consciousness never told the body specifics. Because the innate knows what to do. It's just waiting for the call. You're asking for balance. And innate knows what to do. The smart part of your body can even get in touch with your Akash. It can pull on the right parts of it for health, for change, for dropping habits that you have that you shouldn't have. As simple as eating too much or the wrong things. And you can't help it because it's a habit. And that can change very, very, very quickly. Within a couple of cycles of cellular rejuvenation, creating actual differences in what you want to eat. So there's no suffering and there's no big hunger because it's pulled in a you from the past who didn't have the habit that you had today. That is the power in front of you. C-A-L. Now some of you are going to start doing this and you're going to get results right away. And I want to tell you, if you're one of those, you've got a job to show others how to do it. Because it's not going to happen overnight by someone listening to this channel necessarily. You're going to have to show them what you've done. Lastly, how does it make you feel, old soul? To know you've got a friend inside. To the extent that you can put years and years and years on your life. All of this in appropriateness of the plan that you've laid out for Earth, who you're going to be next time, when you're supposed to come and go. It's about staying healthy while you're here. And that is way outside of the bell-shaped curve. <laughs> and that's what you can do. There'll be another channel at another time on how to recognize what the body says to you. For you don't speak its language necessarily. And you've got to understand through some processes how it might speak back to you so that you can give it better instructions. It's a cycle, you see. <laughs> the channel today is given in a very sacred place to create new tools for you because it's time.